What is going on my petrol powered dudes? We got the ZX6R, which you've already seen videos of. If you have not seen the ZX6R videos that I've already created, make sure to go back and watch those in the entire series. But in this video, I thought I'd create a video with the ZX6R and the F900R, and I brought my boy Zam Nitty. So he's gonna be riding my F900R, and I'm going to be riding the ZX6R and in this video I want to compare the two bikes a uh, naked slash touring bike comparison with the ZX6R so the ZX6R has about 130 horsepower and it weighs about 430 pounds wet and the F900R has got 100 horsepower and weighs 465 pounds I think in a drag race you guys have already seen it on my channel in a drag race this does 3.4 seconds 0 to 60 and I believe this does 3.4 or maybe a little bit lower. I, I have no idea but I've seen videos that this does 3.4, 3.5. In a drag race I think they'll be very comparable but top line we already top line speed I, we already know that this does about 150 and this does about 135. So this video is not necessarily a comparison of how fast these bikes go but it's more of a comparison of living with the bikes, using them, how good, how good do they handle yeah, and it helps, helps you make a decision between naked and sport bikes. Exactly. So yeah, how good is it on the on regular roads and how good is it when you want to thrash it around and have a little bit fun? So this is what we're going to compare in this video because there are a lot of you who are looking for a fast, exciting bike. And let's just admit, you know, during this whole uh, sickness related situation that we're in, we don't, not everybody has a lot of money to drop on multiple bikes. So we kind of want like a bike that serves all purposes. Do you get a ZX6R that is a super sport or do you get a touring bike that could perform as well as this? They're, they're both really similar price point it's just you know what type of bike you want. It's similar comparable power as you said you know it's just difference between sport bike and, and naked. Exactly I agree with you. Alright my boy let's get going. <laughs> So the thing is that not everybody has a lot of money to spend on a motorcycle. What do you get these days? Do you get a super sport or do you get something like a touring bike? Like the one Max is riding? That's a difficult question. Say so if you haven't seen my videos, this is a good chance to check out the F900R videos. In the F900R videos, I've demonstrated that the F900 is a very capable track bike. I mean, the bike ha literally has the same screen as an S1000RR. What does that tell you? And it's a BMW. If it's a BMW, you already know that it's going to ride well. You already know that it's going to be quick on the road. And you already know that it's going to accelerate properly and ride properly and feel good. There's no debate there. So it's a really tough decision, you know? Like, I put myself in your shoes. You want a comfortable bike to ride on a daily basis. Now, if we compare cars, like, if we talk about cars, the BMW M3 or M4 is the perfect car to get for a family man. It's got four doors. You can give that the full beans at the track and on the road, right? But at the same time, when you're uh, when your little baby or your kid or your family's sitting in the back seat, you don't have to go crazy. You could just put that thing on economical mode. And that's exactly what the BMW F900R is. The BMW F900R, in my opinion, is kind of like your M3. You know, you got a family, or you just want to be comfortable. You want something that has four doors. You want to be able to travel long distances. And at the same time, you want to thrash it around on the canyons, at the track once in a while. And that's what the F900R is. The F900R is considered to be a roadster. But in my opinion, it is the M3 of the motorcycle realm. Now, whether we're talking about the F900R or we're talking about Nakeds in general, I think all Nakeds in general can be compared to a car like the BMW M3. Because the M3 is perfect for a family man who just wants to have fun. It's not a good idea for him to get a full-blown race car. And at the same time, it's just not practical for somebody to get something like this. So what do you do, right? What do you do at the end of the day? Oh 
yeah, he's having fun. Rolling thunder. Rolling thunder. Now let's talk about let's talk a little bit about the Kawasaki. The Kawasaki, in my opinion, is probably one of the best next to the R6. I gotta throw the R6 in there. For my Kawasaki fans, I'm not hating on the Kawasaki. I'm just saying that it does have a competitor, so I want to put that in there as well. The Kawasaki and the R6, if we're talking about super sports here in the 600 category, are probably the best all-around bikes if you can handle the more aggressive positioning so so that being said the bike is very comfortable and it is upright for me because i'm just so used to the panigale that i have that is probably the most aggressive super sport or i should say super bike that you can ever ride because the panigales are first and foremost race bikes they're really not meant to be ridden on regular roads like this bike is this bike is your is the perfect all-arounder number one it's less than 150 horsepower, which makes it very user-friendly. As a 600 class bike, it's got 130 horsepower and about 50 foot pound, 50 some odd foot pounds of torque. And I've been riding this bike in six gear, doing 20 miles an hour, and the bike has installed on me, and I think that's phenomenal. As a daily rider, I can see myself owning one of these bikes and riding it back and forth to work. After a long day's worth of work, this bike is very exciting and it's not that aggressive. When it comes down to choosing a bike, whether it's going to be a super sport or a naked, it's really a difficult decision and I think, in my opinion, we're going to get Max's opinion soon, but in my opinion, getting a, getting a, a super sport versus a, a naked touring bike like the F900 or the FC09 or, or the Triumph Street Triple, I think it boils down to a matter of taste because this bike is, in my opinion, just once again, it's pretty comfortable. It is not one of those crazy aggressive bikes like the Panigale. I mean, I've been riding this bike a lot. I've been riding it a whole lot. Since the time Mike gave it to me, he might regret giving it to me, giving it to me after he hears this. But I've literally put about 200 plus miles in this bike. And I've been riding it for a couple of hours a day since he's given it to me. And I haven't been tired at all. What a pretty day to ride. Two wonderful motorcycles. Rolling thunder. Rolling, rolling, rolling. So my petrol powered homies, it's a difficult decision. If you had to choose one bike, which one would it be? Now, you've heard me talk about the two bikes. You've heard how I feel about them. And I have extensive experience with both motorcycles. And sooner or later, we're gonna hear what my friend Max has to say. But now it's your turn. Write down in the comment section what you think. Is it going to be a sport touring bike like the F900R or is it going to be a super sport like the ZX6R? Write down in the comment section your thoughts. So, was talking to Max just now. <laughs> Apparently he's liking the heated grips. So, therein lies the dilemma. With a bike like that, you're always going to be more comfortable than riding a super sport. Because with the Super Sport, you're not gonna get heated grips unless you're buying an S1000RR. But then we're reaching Superbike territory and who wants to ride that around every single day wherever they go, right? So that's the dilemma because with that bike, you can put panniers, saddlebags, and uh, travel around and go places. I'm sure you could do it as well with this, like a tank bag and side bags. So that you can do, but you don't get like creature comforts like you would on that bike. Not to, not to mention, that bike also has cruise control. You're not going to get that unless you get an S1000RR, the 2020 model. And of course, that's going to cost you 20 grand. But that's the bike you're going to have to ride everywhere you go as well. Not exactly a bike I want to daily. Therein lies the dilemma. So I'm doing 27 miles an hour in 6 gear. Can you believe it? And that's one of the greatest things about the 600 class bike is that it's very user friendly. These are, just so you know, the ZX-6R and the R6, they're both race bikes. You can take these bikes on the track and thrash them around all day and ride them back home. Uh, 
All right, Max, so now you've ridden the F900R. Yep. The good news is that you have uh, a Super Sport already. So it's not like you have to get on that bike in order to try out what a Super Sport is like. Now, you're, when you're riding the F900R and you have to make a decision, and this was your only bike that you had to choose, what would be your deciding factor between getting this bike versus a Super Sport now that you have experience with both? So let's start off with how comfortable the bike is. Yeah, definitely. So I have a Yamaha R3 and a Suzuki GSX-R600. Um, I have to say, this feels pretty similar in terms of power and speed to the Gixxer, but also the comfort level of the R3, which is really nice. So it's a nice middle ground between the two bikes. Now, obviously this has a lot more torque down low, feels very similar to the R3 in terms of riding position. Now it's worth noting that this is a much heavier bike than that bike, but it actually feels just as light. It's very flickable. The controls are very easy to, to move around. Uh, feels like it handles really well. Um, as far as handling goes, you know, that's in the same vein there. Just very flickable bike, uh, especially for the weight. Don't feel it at all. Feels like a much lighter bike. Yeah. Really nice feeling. Yeah then you know you have the speed there and the power when you need it. So I guess it all boils, boils down to that, right? It all boils down to like the preference. Yeah. All right, so the next thing to do is to take both of these bikes and check out how they perform on some nice twisty roads. What do you say? I say go for it, let's do it. Yeah. A few moments later. Yeah, so this should be a pretty nice twisty road. I'm gonna ride this Ninja first. Uh, because I want to see what it's what it handles like and then afterwards we're gonna switch off now that Max knows how to GP shift He's gonna ride this one. I'm gonna ride mine. So let's get going All right, this should be fun looking forward to feeling what this bike is like on some twisty roads and the area we're going is prime real estate for some excitement. And we got two sexy, exciting bikes to play with. All right, here we go. We got some nice fast straights over here. Phenomenal. This bike handles so well. Alrighty then. <laughs> that was freaking phenomenal. Alrighty. Yeah. So give me like a quick synopsis of how you feel on the bike. Uh, I mean, like I said earlier, just emphasizing how flickable this bike is and how light it feels to, to steer. Like you, you don't feel like you're, you know, tucked in and like. Oh. Turns. But it's quite surprising that it's still maneuverable even though you don't have to tuck in. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. So now. Very upright. Very comfy the whole time. Yeah. Cool. So now you're going to try that one, and I'm going to be your lead. Oh man, it feels strange to be behind this bike now. Alright, I got to get readjusted to this bike.
All right, so now you had a chance to ride the Ninja. Yeah. What do you think? Um, coming from a 2007 600, super smooth power. Uh, F900, it's like very torquey, got that like low end grunt. This thing just, it, it feels like butter. It's so smooth yeah. the whole way. Well, that's got 27 foot pounds of torque more than this. Yep, yep. So this one definitely, you know, a little bit more power up in the rev range. Yeah. Um, versus that one, it's a lot lower down that torque. Right. Um, but overall, very comfortable bike. I mean, I could see having either one is, is your only bike. Uh, just really depends on your preference. On your preference, right. Like if you want like a very sexy looking sporty bike, then this would be it, right? Yep. Uh, uh, well, I should say super I mean, they're sport. they're both sexy, I would say. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, like a, a bike like this is always going to have, you know, the sexual appeal. Yeah. I compared it to like an M3. That's kind of like an M3. Yep. And this is more like your GT3. Yeah. Your M3's got four seats, right? Yep. The M3's got more seat, four seats. But on the weekends, you can use it on the twisty roads, and you can also put your kids back there, right? Drive it to work, drive it to the grocery store. Whatever. Right. So this is definitely more versatile than that. Versus this is your GT3. It's a sports car. It's only got two seats in the back. You really can't do much with it yep. aside from just using it in the canyons, going back and forth to work. Uh, maybe you can put luggage back there and also in the tank, but this is purpose built for that purpose. But you can have fun with both bikes, and I don't think that you're going to have any compromises. Do you agree Definitely. with that? I totally agree with that. Yep. Or it comes down to, to preference, honestly. I, I, think, I think we both concluded that both of these bikes could be used the same exact way. And I don't think uh, you're going to be compromising um, any kind of sporty feel or speed or handling or anything by going with either of these bikes. They're both awesome bikes. Yeah, I agree. They're both awesome bikes. It's hard to decide between the two. Yeah, I agree. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode. Uh, please like this video, subscribe it, share it with your friends. Now you know the difference between an upright, a naked touring bike. This is like a you're considered to be like your street fighter. And this is your super sport. Uh, honestly, they're both awesome bikes. If I had the room, I would have both of them. But unfortunately, I don't have the money or the room. But that's basically it, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.